Hello and welcome to Neurology Made Easy. Today the topic we are going to discuss is Internuclear Ophthalmoplegia. So I have drawn a diagram uh, in which you can see that uh, one side is right side and the other side is left side and uh, this is the frontal eye field of both side right and left then we have parapontine reticular formation below it we have six nerve nucleus then we have third nerve nucleus and this is our eye and i am showing a lateral rectus and medial rectus So I am trying to highlight in one color so it's easy to understand. I have highlighted lateral rectus of both sides in red color and the medial rectus of both sides in blue color. Okay. Well, uh, so from above to below we have frontal eye field parapontine reticular formation, 6th nerve nucleus, 3rd nerve nucleus and then we have eye. And in between you can see two lines, these are the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So what happens that fibers from one side, for example in this case from right side, they cross and they move to the parapontine reticular formation of the other side. From there they go to the 6th nerve nucleus and they supply to the lateral rectus however some of the fibers from the their cross and they move through the contralateral medial longitudinal fasciculus they enter the third nerve nucleus of the other side and supply the medial rectus of that side so the net result is that lateral rectus of the left eye and the medial rectus of the right eye are activated and the eye will move in one direction that is the left side so if there is damage to these area or this pathway there is internuclear ophthalmoplegia the medial longitudinal fasciculus damage results in internuclear ophthalmoplegia What happens thus, in this case, medial longitudinal fasciculus of right side is damaged. So, the right side eye will not adduct and the opposite eye will uh, show nystagmus on uh, abduction. So, abducting eye will show nystagmus and the eye, this affected side eye will not be able to adduct. I know it has different types. So, simple internuclear ophthalmoplegia or bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia and we also have one and a half syndrome. So, internuclear ophthalmoplegia I have told you. Uh, the other one bi bilateral INO is caused when we have bilateral uh, medial longitudinal fasciculus lesion. So, we have lesion on both the sides then we have bilateral INO. The next is one and a half syndrome. This happens when ipsilateral six nerve nucleus or uh, or uh, parapontine reticular formation plus uh, ipsilateral MLF is damaged. Then we have one and a half syndrome. So you can see that if ipsilateral six nerve nucleus or PPRF is damaged, then uh, you have uh, that uh, that side eye can also not abduct because sixth nerve is supplying the lateral rectus. Moreover, there is is also uh, uh, fibers from left side going to the right side, so medial rectus of right side is ineffective. Then. From the right side, some of the fibers are crossing through the MLF of uh, of the left side and they are going to supply the medial rectus of the left side. So now we have three sides affected that is 
left side medial rectus and lateral rectus and right side medial rectus. So, only side left is um, left spared or, or that is not affected is the lateral rectus of right side. So, this is called one and a half syndrome that is three, uh, three muscles are affected and one is not. So, out of four, three are affected one and a half syndrome. Causes of internuclear ophthalmoplegia are infarction, multiple sclerosis, trauma, herniation, infections or tumors. So, this uh, in this video I have told you about internuclear ophthalmoplegia and uh, the bilateral INO one and a half syndrome. Hope you will enjoy it and share with your friends. Thank you. If you like it, do subscribe to the channel.